What a fun time to be alive, huh? Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and I'm sure you understand that this last weekend was a very, very interesting weekend. Uh, you know, someone took a shot at uh, President Trump, former President Trump, current, current very soon to be president, um, possibly president right now, depending on how you think the last election cycle went and all that stuff. Um, but someone took a shot at him and missed and he survived and there was a whole hoopla. Twitter was absolute fire the past two days and very much enjoying all the memes. And so I have naturally, uh, as have you, as has I'm sure almost everyone in the nation, been thinking about this a lot. And so here are my thoughts. So my first thought was, is how weird this is, right? So if, if you are uh, my age or older, um, there has never been a political violence of this nature, meaning taking a shot at a president in your entire life. I was born in 1985. The last time a president was shot at was 1981, and that was Ronald Reagan when he was uh, shot in the chest, I believe, and uh, ended up surviving. And the last president to be assassinated, of course, was JFK. Uh, the last one before that that I can think of was McKinley at the turn of the century. Um, and so, you know, it's just hasn't been a thing, kind of ironically in our super divided political culture, where someone takes a shot at a, at a president, or in this case, a, a president, uh, presidential candidate, right? That's just not a thing that happens in America hardly ever. I don't know of any time, and, and there, I'm sure there is one, I just don't know of it, where a presidential candidate has been attempted to be assassinated. Uh, that's something you hear out of uh, Mexico a lot, right, where candidates are assassinated. But you don't ever really hear that in America. Um, now, maybe there's some minor state rep races or something, but I can't think of a presidential candidate being shot at before. Again, check me on the facts here. It might have happened. But point is, is it's super weird, right? It's very much outside your political experience. Uh, so it's just like, whoa, this is, this is weird. Like we're shooting it, you know, in my entire life, the idea of shooting at the president or presidential candidate, something is just like a physical impossibility. Like it just, it just can't happen. You don't really think about that as, as one of the choices on the table. Like that's a po within the realm of possibility. It's, it's just not even within the realm of possibility. So it feels very weird. Two, uh, I felt both surprised and unsurprised, right? And, and I'm sure a lot of you who watch this channel out there like that, you're thinking, well, you know, it's surprising because like, holy crap, they actually tried to kill him. And it's unsurprising because like, well, I don't know. I mean, in some degree, we already, we already saw this coming, right? Like they, uh, you know, tried to impeach. Well, they did, they impeached Trump twice. They've charged him with all these, you know, felonies. They've convicted him even, right? And now none of that worked. None of that stopped. It only made it more popular. So, well, what's left? Well, you know, I guess we got to kill him, right? Now, whether it was just some crazy lone gunman or there's some kind of deep state, deep state conspiracy or whatever, I don't know. Not going to get into that. Doesn't matter for our purposes right here. What matters is that he was, someone finally reached the point one way or another where they were going to try to kill him. And that just doesn't feel too surprising given all the, the rhetoric and the hatred and the anger and the literally Hitler and the whatever that we've had for the past eight years running now. Number three, uh, political violence is the norm. Political peace is the exception. So I've been thinking about this, right? Like it feels really weird to you and me probably that someone would actually, would actually try to kill someone over, over this, right? But if you look at human history, that's, that's by far the norm, right? Politics is violence. Um, war is just politics, uh, another method of politics being worked out, right? And how many wars have humans fought in human history, right? So the idea of, of political violence, of using violence against your political foes, one way or another, again, not getting into the, the, into the weeds of who tried to shoot him, whatever, um, is the norm. This, this isn't unheard of to try to kill your political opponents in human history. And I think it's particularly the norm as empires decline, right? If you look at the fall of the Roman Republic, uh, for example, which by the way, if you haven't listened to Dan Carlin's hardcore history on the death throes of the Republic, which is like five or six episodes on how the Roman Republic kind of declines and falls into, falls into empire, um, you should. It's very good. It's very, I, I enjoy that series very much. But if you look at that, 
it's just people getting assassinated and killed and assassinated and killed. And some of these guys start rolling around Rome with like bodyguards of like 500 dudes, right? Like it's not really a bodyguard at that point. It's kind of a small army, right? But me and 500 of my closest friends rolling around Rome so that no one kills me, right? That, that was very common um, towards, again, towards the end and, and these riots and people being beaten to death and like the political violence was the norm. Rome had uh, no standing police force in that era which is kind of weird if you think about it. Um, but again, all that to say, political violence was the norm, particularly as the empire declined. And so we can sit here and say, oh, this is really weird. But I think the other thing is it's not weird. It's not weird in the realm of human history. And it's not gonna be weird for you because the more the empire continues to decline, the more we're gonna see of this kind of thing, right? The, the, the more this kind of thing is gonna happen of, people being politically violent, right? You know, the Democrats are all like, he's literally Hitler and he's horrible and he's evil and he's a dictator and he's a threat to democracy and et cetera, et cetera. And then as soon as someone takes a shot at him, they're all like, whoa, 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 <laughs> let's, let's calm down. I don't know where anyone got this idea, right? But that, that kind of thing is gonna continue. Now, maybe we'll, we'll keep saying stuff about it. Maybe we'll, we'll keep being frustrated about it. Maybe they'll keep saying, oh no, you know, political violence is bad, but let me tell you, he's literally Hitler, and, you know, the two sides of the mouth thing. I don't know, I don't know exactly, but, but I do think as empires decline, historically, the answer is more political violence, not less. And so I think when I say it's not weird to you, what I mean is it's not weird historically and your life goes on, right? It's, 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 it's Monday when I'm making this video, so it'll probably go out Monday night here. Uh, you went to work today, probably, right? Like your life goes on. You still gotta go to the grocery store and buy some food. You still gotta get the oil changed. You still gotta take the kids to the park later this week because you said you would. Like your life is still gonna go on. And as the violence and stuff increases and gets worse and things get weirder, I'm not gonna say things get weird because things are already pretty weird. I mean, we have an open border. We have a president who has dementia. Like, I mean, things are already super weird, okay? But to you, you've just kind of acclimated, kind of the frog in the water thing, and it just feels normal. And I think that that's gonna continue to be the thing. And you might wake up five or six years from now and be like, man, things are actually really kind of, kind of screwed up if you stop and think about it. But you'll have just acclimated that it just doesn't really feel that weird anymore. And I don't say that to, you'll, you'll be desensitized. And I don't necessarily think that's good, bad, or ugly. It just it kind of is what it is. But as this continues to increase and the pressures get worse and uh, the felt stakes get higher, right? There's gonna be more of it. You're gonna acclimate and it's not gonna feel that weird. So I hope that doesn't actually sound doom and gloom. I'm not trying to, I'm just saying like, historically, I don't know how else this ends aside from things keep getting, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I hesitate to say worse, more violent, I guess, <laughs> I guess is what we're gonna say. Things will continue to get more violent because as empires decline, that felt stakes get higher, right? People get more angry, people get more emotional. Then you have, you know, anger and frustration and counter anger and revenge and vengeance and, and just kind of builds on itself. And once, once the, the blood starts getting spilled, it's pretty hard to put that genie back in the bottle. The last thing I'll say is, in some ways, this gives me hope. Um, and what I mean is, you know, if you watch that thing, right? Trump handled that like a champ. You know, the, the thumbnail that I used for this video, right? That will be in every history book for the rest of mankind ever, right? Like th that, that's a historic picture, this is a historic thing. And wherever this goes from here, if they get them a second time, if, if they don't get them, whatever, th this, is, this is history in the making. And so I think it'll be interesting to see, the reason I have hope is, maybe Trump will go in and kind of kind of clean the system out a little bit and actually make some hard decisions this time and fire everybody at the Board of Education and plow the building down and salt the earth, right? And, and completely remove the FBI from existence, right? Like, like maybe he'll actually, maybe he'll actually do something this time, like some permanent, just, you know, wrecking ball changes. That would be, that'd be exciting, right? Like, like maybe something will happen here. He's obviously, they've, they've, they've done everything they can to this guy at this point. Right? They couldn't impeach him. They convicted him of felonies. That didn't work. They've tried to kill him. That didn't work. So at the, he's unstoppable. So at this point, I wonder if he's going to be inspired to, to go all the way and completely clean house, right? 
We're going to completely demolish all these agencies. We're going to completely, as much as we can, redu permanently reduce the size of the federal government. I wonder. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that maybe this would be something that would wake him up to do that because he didn't really do that the first time. Maybe, maybe we'll get it this time. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I have a litany of criticisms of Mr. Trump. But at this point, I'm absolutely going to vote for him because, you know, uh, screw the other guys. So maybe I'm going to be wrong. Maybe we're not past the point of no return. Maybe we're going to turn this sucker around. And that's kind of exciting. That's kind of fun. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Do brave deeds and endure.